Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Geico 15-Minute Moto Show. I'm your host, Ralph Shaheen. You know, if you've followed along with me and my passions for motorcycle racing, you know my number one favorite form of motorcycle racing is Supercross. And they're getting ready for the 2022 season to kick off real soon in January out in Anaheim. So I thought this would be a great time to get together my good friend, Dave Prater, director of Supercross, and talk a little bit about what to see coming in 2022. How you doing, Prater? I'm good, Ralph. I'm good. It's great to see you, man. I'm happy to be here. Good. Glad to have you with us. Okay, so you got a whole new season coming along. Uh, are we seen 17 races in 18 weeks again? 17 races in 18 weeks. It's, uh, it's nice to get back to semi-normal. Um, you know, the last couple of years have been uh, different, fun and interesting, but different. So um, it'll be nice to be 16 different, or actually 13 different venues going to Anaheim three times. But I'm um, excited to be back at Anaheim and those traditional dates and venues. I think that's one of the things I always found intriguing about what Supercross does, how you pick the stadiums, how you lay out the calendar. I know from conversations with you in the past that sometimes you could have five, six, eight schedules laid out at one time as you put a season together. How does that work? Yeah, it's really just a big jigsaw puzzle. I know you've been, you've, you've uh, been interested in it for years and we've had multiple conversations, but it's interesting because it's, it's evolved over the years as well. So when I first started this 20 years ago, we'd call the Georgia Dome in Atlanta and they'd say, hey, tell us what, if, what weekend you want to come and race. And we've got, you know, 18 weekends available. Now there's so much going on at these venues and these stadiums that Atlanta, for instance, they gave us two, two weekends um, the last time we were at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Same with uh, U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. They've got two available weekends. So it's a jigsaw puzzle because we've got multiple contracts going on. And some say we had, we had a 10-year contract with Angel Stadium. We had a two-year contract with Oakland. We have a three-year contract with St. Louis. So, you know, the contracts will, will um, expire and we're looking for a renewal or a new venue. And you've got, you've got contracts in place and they may be long-term contracts such as Anaheim or you've got dates locked in. So just a lot of moving parts. And you're right. I think the one time uh, we were talking about specifically, we literally had eight different schedules up on the whiteboard and we were just moving the pieces around and finally came to it. But it's a year round, a year round process that we're actually in the middle of right now, even though 22 starts in a month and a half, um, we've got 23 and 24 that we've been working on simultaneously. And some of that is wish list stuff, right? Where you would love to go because maybe you want to get in a new market or bring Supercross back to a fan base that hasn't seen it in a couple of years. At the same time, one of the other challenges you have to deal with is Major League Baseball and the NFL, when their seasons are going to take place. Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the things, even this year, that, that uh, came into play because the NFL went to the 17-game season. And so that pushed everything back, pushed the playoffs back. Um, and so we, we weren't able to get into some football fields when we typically could. So Glendale, for instance, which is one of those stadiums that we go to typically in January, late January, it wasn't available until early February now due to the playoffs and the potential playoffs and looks likely now with the Cardinals, the way they're playing. So just a lot of moving parts, a lot of, uh, you know, different things to consider um, along with these, the tenants, the regular tenants of these buildings. Yeah, now you got these big stadium tours going again with concerts and stuff. That's got to get in the way too. Yeah, that's actually a great point. So with everything, with obviously the COVID situation, everything shutting down and now <clears throat> been shut down for a year and a half or so, and now everything's starting to open up. Well, all of these events, all these concerts and everything that was planned for 20 and 21 that couldn't happen, now everyone's clamoring to get back in these stadiums and get back out there. So that's made it a challenge as well. And that's why we're, like I said, we're still, we're right now working on 23 and 24 just because of the competition for those dates. Feld Entertainment, which owns and operates the Supercross series, also does Monster Jam. So you work in conjunction with the guys down the hall uh, figuring out who's going to get in which stadium on which weekends and share the dirt, if you will. Yeah, it's, it's nice to do that when we can, because obviously it offsets the cost if we don't have to move dirt in for Supercross and then move it out and then back in for Monster Jam. So 
again, it's one of those things you've tr you tried to work in concert so we can get back to back weekends. But like I said, it's being it's becoming trickier and trickier with so many different venues, so many different uh, dates being held by other events and, and uh, to your point, NFL or Major League Baseball teams that it gets trickier every year. But um, that's what we try to do. We try to piggyback Supercross and Monster Jam just for some efficiencies there. Supercross races border to border and coast to coast. You've been up into Canada, for example, over the years. Um, everywhere you go, Dave, there's different dirt. Red clay down in Georgia, sand down in Florida, hard pack out in California. Where does all this dirt come from, for those that maybe don't know, and, and what do you do with it in between runs? So, interesting question, and believe it or not, we own dirt in every city that we race in. So, um, it's, uh, it's a funny thing that I do every now and then, but I go out and I go dirt shopping. Um, my wife laughs every now and then uh, in November, I'll go dirt shopping. But we own, we own dirt at every venue that we race in. Um, for instance, Anaheim. So, and we have to have a place to store it. We like to store it as close to the stadium as we can. So, if you've ever been to Angel Stadium in Anaheim um, or seen it, you know, on television, Supercross or the Angels, the employee parking lot is actually elevated four feet. It's right by the big A out in the parking lot. The employee parking lot is elevated four feet. And underneath that is our Supercross and Monster Jam dirt. So, Every December we come in, we peel off the asphalt, bring in the dirt, build the Supercross track. And then that typically we're in uh, Anaheim for a month and a half, rotating between Supercross and Monster Jam. And then at the end of those, uh, call it seven events in February, we take the dirt out, build that employee parking lot back and asphalt over it. And the, the stadium employees park there year round there for the Major League Baseball games. That's incredible. But that can also be a challenge in some places. I remember uh, going up into Toronto and being up there in the wintertime, that dirt freezes. And that can be a real challenge when you have to move that indoors. It does, Ralph. And I think you remember the, the one time it came in frozen and yeah. literally started melting um, on Friday night. So we were, that was the first indoor mud race I think we've ever, we've ever <laughs> had, but uh, yeah, it's a challenge for sure. And in, in, in Toronto, we stored that dirt under an overpass trying to stay out of the elements. But the reality is with the moisture in the air and the, it just seeps in. So you can't get away from it completely. We weren't, obviously it wasn't covered in snow, but just the moisture when you've got that much cold and that much uh, frost, um, there's not much you can do about it. You just got to do the best you can. Yeah, Dave, a lot of folks don't realize that dirt is a living thing, believe it or not. Uh, and you have to work that dirt year after year. How, how do you do that? And how often do you freshen up dirt? In other words, how long does it last? It depends. I mean, it can last quite a long time if it's an indoor venue um, or depending on where it's stored. But like Anaheim, for instance, so that dirt, last on average about six years and it's it's due to a, a bunch of different things but basically when we come into Anaheim we we start with a base a solid foundation so it's road base at the, on the on the actual baseball field and then we build the super cross track with the dirt on top of that well over the years weather and unfortunately it rains as everyone knows every now and then at these races um, that dirt gets contaminated with that road base so we either have to screen it, screen it out, screen the, the rocks and stuff that are in the road base out to get the new, the new fresh dirt. Or in many cases, we just switch it out. And that's when I said, well, when I go dirt shopping, um, that's what I do. But um, it's, it's last about six years at an outdoor facility and probably double that at an indoor facility. But um, yeah, it's, it's different. It's living, like you said, and especially that's what makes Supercross so unique, I think. It's the track changes every lap. Um, yeah. So you can't be you can't be complacent. The riders are always seeing something different with every lap. And uh, it's just one of the one of the unique challenges of Supercross. Every one of these venues uh, takes roughly 550 truckloads of dirt to fill out the floor. All of these floors are different shapes and sizes. Certainly the baseball fields have different layouts with their outfield walls, that sort of a thing. Uh, explain, if you will, the process of building a Supercross track, how long it takes, 
uh, and what the Dirt Works folks, uh, the Supercross track builders, do, uh, and how long it takes them to get a track ready to go for a Saturday night. Well, it takes us. So we move in. Um, we move in Monday with field protection. So whether that's plywood over a natural grass or, or an artificial grass or artificial turf field, um, and then a layer of visqueen. And then, like I said, outdoors, we do the road base to give us that firm foundation, depending on whether indoors, we don't need to do the road base. So Tuesday morning, the first truckload of dirt will hit the floor and dirt works will continue to build. And we're, we're race ready by about noon on Friday. So it takes us about three, three and a half days to build the entire thing. But obviously a lot goes into it prior to that. And we actually um, meet the day after the final round with the AMA and with Dirt Works and start talking about tracks and what worked this year, what didn't work, what we can try for next year. And then we do a few iterations of diagrams throughout the summer, um, talk to some riders and some teams about where the diagrams are going and then finalize those usually in late August, um, early September for the next next year's build. Okay, so the new season, the 22 season is gonna start up in January in just a couple of weeks here now. Uh, what can the fans expect uh, from the schedule in 22? New venues? Well, new venues, not really new venues, but uh, going back to some, some venues we've been to, we're going back to Minneapolis, US Bank Stadium, excited about that. Returning to Foxborough, um, after a couple of years hiatus, hiatus there. And then Atlanta Motor Speedway, going back to Atlanta Motor Speedway for the second year in a row. So really excited about those three. And then excited about, you know, like I said, Anaheim, San Diego, Glendale, those West Coast rounds that we weren't able to make um, last year just due to the COVID situation. So um, it really everything, if you think about it, is going to be fairly new this year because everyone's just – clamoring, uh, ready to get out there, ready to get together and watch some Supercross racing again. Yeah, I know a lot of folks on the West Coast are going to be anxious to see the Supercross back in action. Size up the championship battle for us. Uh, a lot of great returning riders and, of course, always new young talent on the way in. Yeah, no, I know. I, uh, You know, it's hard to bet against the champ, and I'd say Cooper's, Cooper's got to be up there as the favorite, but you got Roxon, you got Tomac going to to a new team. You got so many guys going to new teams. You got Plessinger at, at KTM, Anderson at Kawasaki, um, Malcolm going to Husky. So just so many, so many uh, fast guys and so many talented guys that are going to be out there. But I don't know. I think uh, I'll make two predictions right now, and we'll see. Don't don't put any money on it, but. Uh, Barsha wins the opener. I don't know how you can go against that guy after three well, you, years. You reached deep for that one, didn't you, Dave? Yeah, yeah, He's done that numerous times. You're really going out on I a know, limb there. I know. That's a, that's a stretch. <laughs> but uh, Barsha wins the opener. And uh, I'd say it's it's a tight battle to the end. But I, I'll I'll put my uh, I'll put my money on Cooper for this year again uh, as a returning champ. So we'll see. But I think it's going to be exciting. I, you've got Sexton as well, though. you got, you know, Chase, who's a young guy coming up, who had a great rookie season, dealt with some injuries, but um, I think he'll be strong. And Ferrandis as well. I think Ferrandis hit his hit his stride in the outdoors, and I think it's going to be uh, – he's not going to lose much, if any, momentum going into Supercross. Well, the big thing about Supercross is you got to survive the season, right? 17 races in 18 weeks is so brutally tough on the riders, just the competition itself. And then the traveling and the training, uh, that's a big challenge for these guys as well. Okay, look, I wouldn't have my journalist hat on uh, properly if I didn't ask you this question. You've already hinted you're working on 23 and 24. Come on, Dave, give us a little, a little insight. Any new venues? I mean, there's a new stadium in Vegas, a new one in L.A., and you keep telling me you're coming to Charlotte. You want to give me a tip? <laughs> we're always talking to those guys. We're talking. We're definitely talking to SoFi, talking to Allegiant. Talked, we've talked to uh, Bank of America Stadium. I've met with those guys. So, yeah, always. And I'd love to. I'd love to be in Charlotte. I'd stop by and see you. You guys come out and, uh, and see us. But can't really let you in on any any secrets <laughs> yet, Ralph. But um, just know we're always looking. We're always looking for new venues. Always looking to have races in different areas around the country. And and those two that you mentioned first, uh, L.A., SoFi, and Allegiant in Vegas are definitely on the top of our list for sure. 
Well, you know, I'll be there uh, and watching. Love Supercross. Can't wait to see it back in action here in 22. Of course, folks want to come to the race at supercrosslive.com for tickets. Definitely supercrosslive.com for tickets. Uh, the NBC broadcast schedule was just released, so go there and check that out. But, um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. All right, Dave, thanks for joining us here today. That's it, everybody, for this episode of the Geico 15-Minute Moto Show. Make sure you tune in and catch all the great Supercross action coming your way in 22. I'm Ralph Shaheen. We'll see you with another episode of our show right here on Speed Sport next week.